started. Okay, we are here. Um, hello, everybody watching and everything. We, I have a very special announcement, a very special guest. Uh, Drumvalo Mokizdek is joining me today for the Spirit Side Chats. We're super happy to have you. Thank you, Drumvalo, for coming on. Oh, Jordan, thank you for inviting me. This is, uh, this is a real honor. Thank you. So much so. <laughs> <laughs> it works both ways, Jordan. <laughs> I'm, I'm really you. happy about what you've done with my work out into the world, and uh, it, you did an awesome job, and I'm really, uh, I want to support you in any way I can. Thanks. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I was just having this conversation with someone the other night, um, w which was like, you know, they were saying, like, just thank you for spirit science. And I was like, you know, like, I have to redirect that gratitude to Drumvelo because it was you who spent, you know, 30, 40, 50 years going and traveling around the world, meeting all of the spiritual teachers and masters and like getting all of the information and compiling it into yeah. such a such a, a, an easy, understandable package it was it's just brilliant all of the work you've done it was fun jordan it was it was not a it was not a job it was a pleasure to do it and i'd do it all over again if i could uh in fact uh i'm starting a, a new book uh right now I, i'm not done yet i'm about 75 percent done and i should be done this year and uh but this work is going to it's going to connect back to the original flower volley uh, that uh, the flower of life uh, started, and, and it uh, and it went for many many years. But on the second version of the ancient secret of the flower of life, uh, on page three sixty one to three sixty five, uh, I said something, and I don't even know why. When I said it back then, in, in the year I was probably about nineteen ninety eight or ninety nine. Uh, I didn't really know what I was talking about, but the, the angels were telling me, put it in. I said, well, okay. And I put in this information that there was more, a lot more having to do with the Merkaba. And so, uh, uh, I, and I waited and I waited 17 years or more. And in 17 years, uh, in the last, starting in, starting in 2014, a whole new body of work became apparent to me that I didn't know was there. And uh, it has changed my life. The, the whole way that I understand everything is completely changed. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm very happy to do this one. Uh, this, is, it, this is gonna really help anyone who is interested in the Merkaba. This is gonna, you're, you're gonna realize that this is something bigger than anything I've ever thought about before. Uh, so I'm, sometime this year, I, I'm not sure exactly, I think it will be probably about six months from now. That's brilliant. That's actually right, this is, this is that's a good synchronicity because um, there's, I've had like a number of people come and ask me and talk to me in the last just couple of days actually about the significance of the August eclipse, which it runs like, I don't know if you know anything about it, but it runs like directly through the states um, in August, 17th or something like that and I wanted to ask you if there was any significance about that but it sounds like you're gonna release a book right around the same time oh I think your audio went out you might have been muted um, but I don't I don't know I can't hear you anymore no your audio looks fine on here that's very strange Hmm. What changed? That's such a good, okay. Um, if you go to your, go back to your settings, I guess we'll, we'll that's very peculiar. Did that work? Oh yeah, that worked. You know what happened? No. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea what happened. <laughs> oh, I can save it. There we go. Now, am I still talking? Yep. Yep. You're oh, good. I got it this time. Good. I didn't save it last time, and that's what happened. Okay. Reverted. I see. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, do you know anything about this eclipse? And 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 maybe there's like, are you just feeling like does that t like sync up at all with your with like the book? I haven't I haven't looked at that one yet. There's one today, you know. There is one today. Yeah, I wanted to say too because this is this is the other significance. Yeah, uh, and I'm uh, my wife is really into that stuff. Uh, I I don't really know. I I fly I fly blind. All my workshops that I've done all my life. Uh, they just tell me when to do it, and I never look at the, what it means. And it's always on a full moon or an eclipse or something like this going on. And mm -hmm. I've got people who on other places that work that out. I don't really don't even think about it anymore. <laughs> I totally it works out one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So okay, so you have to tell me more about this book then, because you just said it completely changed your life, and you're putting more information about the Merkaba. And I know that's probably. It, Obviously, there's like a book worth of information, but I think uh, this is well. It's called the book name is the Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Volume Three, and uh, and to because it is an extension of that series, not of the Mayan series or anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it oh gosh, there's so much to say. I don't even know where to start. Uh, <laughs> it, it began when I I was I was studying. Uh, uh, the, the angels were saying that there was more, and I didn't know what they meant. And then I went to a uh, a, a conference in New Mexico called the Electric Universe, and that's where it began. Because th this is all scientists and physicists and mathematicians, and it's just pure science. And what they have shown is that, and which I knew already, was that the old science was wrong. It was really wrong. I knew this is the reason when I went through college, I got to only 90 days left to get a degree in physics. And I and I turned it down because there were so many anomalies in their work that it wasn't even a science the way I looked at it. It was just a guess mm -hmm. at what was going on uh, there. But now they've hit upon something really quite remarkable. Uh, I, I gave this work. I put it into a workshop and gave it on, uh, when was that, March, March 2015, and I went out to the world. And then I gave them one more in May of 2015. That's the last time I've done that. Since then, I've done nothing but write and, and just figure out what, how, what all this is. And I'm still working on it because there is stuff here that really nobody on earth has ever seen before. They don't even know it exists. They, oh, there's a few people maybe a hundred, but nobody knows what I'm about to talk about hardly. And now, even though I put it out to the world, there's gonna be people that have a kind of an idea about it, but this is big. This is really, really, really big. The, the uh, I, I put it this way in the, in, in, in the workshop, science, you call yourself spirit science, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. There's two different aspects. There's the spirit way of perceiving the universe, and there's a science way of perce perceiving the universe. And, and when spirit says that there is only one God, one life, one spirit that moves through everything, and this is pretty much believed by all the religions of the world, though they, they think that their God is the only one and the other ones aren't. It's the same, same, same consciousness. Yep. But still, that's what they think. And so we believe this. But science does not. Science says, uh, well, the fact, they, if, they said, if you think that the whole universe is interconnected of one living being, then there has to be some form of communication. There has to be some way that, that we can talk. But uh, they say that the fastest thing in the universe is the speed of light, 186,200 miles a second. It sounds really fast, but it's, everything is relative. So if you compare it to the universe, the universe now, the newest uh, size of the universe that just came out recently is uh, th uh, 13.8 billion light years across. So if somebody was on one edge of the universe and another, somebody was on the other edge and they were trying to talk to each other, it would take 13.8 billion years to get to him. And, he, and, and if I say hi, then he says hi back. It takes another 13.8 billion years to get back. And so science looks at that and says, no, this universe is not interconnected. Mm -hmm. But something happened in 1906 or 8, I can't remember, 
uh, but it was approximately one of those two dates. Uh, this man named Birkelin, uh, uh he figured something out and he was able to prove it, but nobody knew what he was proving. He was proving the work of uh, Tesla. When, now, this is all about ordinary electricity that's in your walls and you play, that we're running on right now. Ordinary electricity, we think, is moves through wires and it moves through wires at near the speed of light because it has a it has a a, a medium it has to move through, and uh, and all of our research that we've done has been done inside of wires right. because of Morgan said Tesla wanted to put it out into the air and through the earth. And uh, so that everybody could have free electricity and Morgan had a fit on all of that said no I want to make money on this thing and so he, he only all the research that was done other than Tesla was only through wires and uh, And so we understand that we got it. We know what through wires is But we don't know what electricity through space is We don't know like electricity like lightning coming through the sky and especially in deep space what does it do? Well, this guy Birkeland at the turn of the century found out that there's a that electricity when it's in a vacuum moves a little bit faster. <laughs> the original mathematics that came out showed that it was 20 billion times faster than the speed of light. And then and that's fast. That if it was 20 billion times, that means it would take about a half a second to get to the other side. And in half a second to get back, so that's functional, right? That would be, it wouldn't be great, but it's functional. But later they did more math, and they once they understood more about it, and they realized, oh my God, this is way faster than twenty billion. If you said nine hundred billion times faster, that would still be too slow. In the math, they discovered two things that are huge: time does not exist, and and distance does not exist. So those two equations are not in any of the math because and you know we're just looking at synopsis electrical firings in our brain that that fire that tell us what's out there. just electricity telling us what's out there and moving it across wires you might say but uh Anyway, we it, it is different than this, and and now they know that distance means nothing and time means nothing, and so they can discovered is that a Birkeland current will go across the universe in zero time, not like a nanosecond or something, but absolutely zero time it'll move across the universe, and it doesn't matter how far it is. It could be, the universe could be a billion light years across, and it would still do it. Wow. So this changes everything. It changes everything. Now we have now the very thing that we're looking at each other, electrical electromagnetic fields, that's what we're using to see each other with. <clears throat> we could do the same thing on Berkman currents <clears throat> and spread images and just what we're doing right now all the way across the whole universe. And further, what they discovered is it doesn't just go from point A to point B, it spherically goes out. To all levels of existence no, so and, and that means all the small worlds as they get tinier and tinier and tinier which infinity forever or the big worlds that go on forever uh, it, it expands to the smallest world to the biggest world it, it communicates with everything and so once I realized this I realized now I had something to talk to the science world because or to the spirit world that is really important and and so I'm, I'm doing this now I'm, I'm first given all the history of what happened on it and then later in the book we go into how you can use this in meditation and and connect yourself to a very large huge areas of space and time and dimension and uh, and the, and they can communicate back to you uh, we many people say they can do this through through faith, and I'm not saying that they can't. Oh, wait a minute, I got something. Oh, I gotta click it up. Uh, I, I'm not saying that they can't do that, but uh, uh, 
Now, I'm going to have to lay this out very carefully in a book form so that it, it makes sense to someone. And you can take it. And, uh, it, it, you know, I would love to work with you on this. And you can take it and, and, and put it in a way that's even clearer than I'm able to do it. I gotta, I am, I'm restricted to the being able to prove everything through science. <laughs> well, so am I. Yes, but, I, you, yes, but you just so. have to understand it. And, and you put it out in your way, which is very, it's, it's better than a book. It's, it is. It's better. I agree. <laughs> I never <laughs> claimed that. <laughs> I don't have to claim it. I'll claim it. It's okay. the, book because, uh, the book nails it down, but you make it clear, and that is, uh, that's, to me, that's beautiful. So I want to support you. Oh. And you can. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Took, yeah. a, took a turn I wasn't expecting there, actually. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you more about this current because now, like, I've, you know, you spent a lot of time directly with both, and I've, Spend a lot of time with the Thoth tarot deck and the Hermetica, so it's a little different. But um, <laughs> one of the one of the things that I you know I've read a lot about and just meditated on and everything is really kind of tapping into what uh, Thoth or Hermes described in ancient Greece as like the mind of God, um, yeah. and, and you know through thought everything is connected. And I'm wondering is is this the Birkin? I think you said it was Birkin current, like this this zero time thing. Is this is is this the same Field as like in, in in physics is this is this the gravitational field? Are these thought waves? Well, are these emotional waves? When you when you set everything up, so in meditation, you have to set your body and currents moving through your body in certain kinds of ways. It's taken a long. It's taken me years to figure this out. <clears throat> I think I've been working on this since uh, two thousand fourteen, and. Uh, and it, did, it wasn't until about 2015 that I just began to understand what it was. That's where I did the first workshop. But now I, I, I've been working in meditation on this for almost three years. And, and I have connected to the universe. And they have come back here to my house. And uh, it's literally. Not here, what? Literally. literally. <laughs> it, it's, uh, and and, they, and what, he, what they're saying is, it's everything's all connected and everybody's talking to everybody right now except that we don't know it that does because, yeah. we, we, because of this thing that happened to us thirteen thousand years ago we are not connected mm -hmm. and we have to reconnect but when we reconnect uh then instantaneously we are a new species and this is what the mayans were saying see see i never got into what the mayans were saying too much in there because they didn't want me to uh, they said in the first part of their their uh, uh, prophecy w with all of this is that uh, the first thing that's going to happen is the the male aspect of the, of the cycle, the precession of the equinox, that thirteen thousand year cycle. The male aspect of that is just going to crumble and die, and it hasn't happened yet. That's for another reason. The Mayans still don't understand why it didn't happen, mm -hmm. and uh, because we're now in a new kind of cycle, which I can talk about if you want, but uh, they, uh, I'm getting excited. <laughs> no, excited, exciting. So, uh, so, so the Mayans said it was going to crumble, and then immediately following that, which had to begin by January 1st, 2016, was the, because that's the beginning of the new part of the female cycle, which goes for another, actually about 12,000, 600 years. And, uh, uh, that part of the cycle, uh, they, they, I sat down in Guatemala with the head uh, uh, of, the, of the Mayan, uh, all the Mayan culture, and about 25 other uh, Mayan heads of, of, uh, in there. And they told me all this. And they told me, they said, now we'll tell you the other part of the cycle of the Mayan prophecy. But they were afraid for them to put it out because they were afraid they were going to lose credibility because no one would believe them. And I understand. And, and I, it was hard for me to understand also until I understood this, what, what Berkeley currents. And now, okay, this is possible now, but it wasn't possible at the time that they were trying to talk to the world about it. Uh, and that is what they said was, you're going to come to a time very quickly uh, where you, every human being on, that is alive on earth after this 
is done, will be able to be anywhere in the universe by intention. And I mean literally taking their body and all and physically being anywhere. That's pretty hard to accept. Mm -hmm. uh, until, you under, until you start understanding the, the Berkman currents and what can take place on that and what it is and how it works throughout the universe. They're learning that stars are communicating with each other. Our sun communicates with the earth. Every time you see an aurora borealis come out around the top, the, 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 the two poles, uh, you are seeing Berkman currents coming from the sun to the earth in zero time, which is now scientifically being documented, which is throwing out all their ideas about the speed of light because it takes eight and a half minutes to get here by the speed of light. It takes zero time if it's a Berkman current. And a Berkman current comes out of the sun whenever there's a CME, a coronal mass ejection. And that, and it goes and it instant, uh, instantaneously uh, this Birkeland electrical current comes out of the sun and follows the gravitational field back to the earth and hits the earth and she responds with the aurora borealis. And this is sexual between the sun and the earth. That makes this, sense. This is what it really is. And, and uh, I, I have so much information on this now, it's like I can't get it all out. It's all crammed in there. Yeah. No, so it's, so it's sort of like um, just the basic kind of new, I mean, there's, cause there's, you're, you're, you're kind of, operating from like scientific knowledge that hasn't even like phased the general public yet. And then like what we have like in the general, in the general populace and everything like that with quantum physics, like they're saying, you know, two particles or two atoms or molecules or whatever. This can process be, can this exist in two places simultaneously. So you're basically saying the moment that the sun emits the thing, like the moment that that, that, that exists. Zero, literally the moment the yeah. beam starts coming out of the sun, it's, we're connected. It's all there. Yeah, yeah. And, that's right. connected to him. and, so that's uh, and he can direct it just at her, or he can direct it to it, all of them, or he can direct it to three of them. It's, it's totally conscious. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and so, uh, but what's so? What first of all, I have to when in the book we have to explain the the cosmic level of all of this because it's as above, so below. But the so below is us. <laughs> and that's a really amazing thing. If you go back into the sacred writings, and especially the ones out of uh, Europe, uh, they will talk about something that nobody really got very well. And that is that the human being is a mortal coil, an electrical coil. And we're a mortal one. We're, we're a biological mortal coil. And, uh, and what does that mean? That's what I've been spending the last three years on understanding. We are a coil. And that coil is one that is capable of producing electricity on such high levels of energy that we can't even believe, and, and, uh, but we can prove it. And, uh, and it, it comes out of the top of us and stream, just like if you see a galaxy out there and you see how the disk comes out and then you see these two beams of lights when they're streaming, this thin beams of light that come out of the top and the bottom. You look, they're all over the, out there if you look at them. Uh, they are streaming Birkeland currents and connecting with all life everywhere. And, and we can, as an individual, the size doesn't matter in this. As an individual, we can do this too. And it changes, uh, what it changes, what I'm realizing, is it changes the way that we can ascend. When, when I gave the Awakening the Illuminated Heart workshop, uh, uh, that was complete. I, I, it took me a long time, but it was done. It tells you exactly how to go in the, the ancient way that all, almost most of the, the majority of the ascended masters, there's about a little over 8,000 of them, that's how they did it. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's been so proven so many more than anything else, and that's the met method we use. There are other methods. But they take a long time because you have to go from here to the third, four, from the third to the fourth dimension, you got to get used to that for a little bit. Then you go to the fifth dimension, which is formless. And now you're going into formless states and everything from there on is formless. And you have to go in through all 144 dimensional levels to get into the place that we were going. This would take a while. I don't really know how long, but it'd take a long time. But with the Brooklyn currents, 
it connects you to all life and you enlightenment is instantaneous like a lightning bolt it's over so it's, it's done it's sort of like when you release the the limitation that you can only go so fast you can go infinitely faster it's, it's not just the mental limitation you have to know how to move this energy through the body and and we know how now and uh we it, it's just gonna it's a teaching that that uh that i am going to give to everybody it's this up to them to decide whether this they want to do this or not but uh, this is it is also incredibly beautiful and pleasurable it is uh it's tantra and you can't it's all about your heart and the beating of your heart of how the heart makes the electrical flow that goes up and down your spine and and, and it's and which creates this 60 foot approximately magnetic field around your body which is your biosphere we talk about this in in, in this also yeah. and the biosphere science uh, through stanford and heart math has proven that the biosphere is connected directly to the geomagnetic field of the earth and so literally every person on earth is connected to the geomagnetic field whether they want to be or not and every single person on earth is connected now to each other and we don't know it we can communicate with any person on earth better than a cell phone once we know how this works and uh, but that's just the beginning of reconnecting back to the universe that's another very slow way but these the um the oh gosh this is, this is hard to do in such a short amount of time i know it <laughs> but but the heart makes this the heart i'll just let me just talk about the how the heart makes such a massive amount of electricity okay there is uh there's seven regions uh, in the in the heart that it has to this has to pass through and it begins in the uh ah what's it called the pacemakers cells and the pacemaker cells are this one area of the heart up in the top I mean, if you're in the body, it's in the right hand corner and it, it uh the pacemaker cells take a little bit of magnesium or uh phosphorus and they take calcium a few they take three things and there's different ones they can choose and they make a little tiny battery a li literally a battery just like it drives our car and they take the electricity from it and they send it to another region and that region then gets it and sends it to another region it goes through seven regions till it comes back to the same place it was at and what's really going on is there's a this is another huge gift that we have to give to the world i mean if you're a mathematician and you're listen, listening to me right now and you think you know math you're going to realize you don't know anything <laughs> you don't know nothing you you, you know man-made math calculus and and uh algebra and these are man-made math which is trying to approximate the reality but god made math there's math and when you see it you know god made it beyond i don't have to tell you you know when you see it because it is so simple it only has numbers between one and nine and no and 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 it and from that, it created the entire universe, just from one to nine. And out of that came uh, what we call the Fibonacci sequence, which every, which I've told everybody, that's what created all life on this planet. Mm -hmm. But there is more, there are six more Fibonacci sequences that nobody knows about. No mathematician, except for a few. Most of the mathematicians in the world don't know what I'm talking about. There's six more, or there's seven uh, Fibonacci sequence that produce all the life in the universe. I'm so excited to wrap my head around that. Well, they're simple. And when you see them, you know they're Fibonacci. They do exactly the same thing. You add the next one to the next one. Only they move in a different way where the, the, the first one goes out and, and literally infinitely goes forever. Or, and infinitely goes forever within uh, life restricts it to a certain point it makes so many turns and like a nautilus shell goes so many times and then ends mm -hmm. because it chose to end and not go infinitely and uh, but this one is 
uh, these are very, very different. There was a, a movie that came out just recently uh, called uh, The Arrival. Did you see The Arrival? Yes, a brilliant movie. I loved it. Okay, it's a very good movie, especially showing how 90 degree turns and gravity and dimensional levels are connected. Uh, that was really good. But there was one place in that movie uh, where they they go inside this thing, a long tube thing, and there's a invisible uh, field across it. And on the other side, it's another dimension with yeah. these other higher dimensional beings. And at one point, and on this side are human beings, and they're talking back and forth between this film, this between the wor worlds. And at one point, the ET initiates something. They go up to the screen, and they're they're they have they're, they are based on seven. Hepto. And so it, it, they have seven arms, like an octopus instead of eight. They got seven. And the hands have seven fingers. And he puts his seven fingers on the screen between that. And he tells her to put her hand up. But she puts both hands up. So there's ten fingers up there. And he goes, no, no. And so she goes, okay. And she puts up her hand. And her, his hand's there with seven. And her hand's there with five. And... Uh, and that was really important because it's talking about this very thing. Uh, the first Fibonacci sequence goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, mm -hmm. 8, 13, 21. Yeah. And so 5 is part of our Fibonacci sequence. That's why we have five fingers and five toes. But uh, he has seven. Well, the very second, the second Fibonacci sequence it, it, it goes zero, one, one, three, five. And when it hits eight, it converts into seven. And, uh, and, uh, and seven is part of the next sequence, but not, but, uh, uh, but doesn't exist in the first one. And so he's talking about there's a higher life form. And all the for best I can tell, there might be more above this, but there's at least one more a definitely different uh, sequence. So the mathematics of those bodies are going to be different than our bodies. Right. Yeah, and, that makes a lot of sense. and so uh, that was a, that was such a clear thing in there only because I knew what I knew. If I, otherwise, it's just like, what are they talking about? Why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll, I'll get there eventually for you guys. I, I, I want to. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to get there. But... Uh, this 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 work i want to i want to acknowledge who did this there's a mathematician in the world and his name is marco rodin r o d i n and marco has been working on this his whole life and and, and he's about to give all of his knowledge out for the first time too he's got about 80% more than anyone who has followed him ever knows and when we got together two of us got together for two weeks he knows that sacred geometry exists but he doesn't know, he doesn't really know it, at least like I spent my whole life on it, and he spent his whole life on this other form of mathematics. And when we saw what he showed me what he knew, and, and when I did, I superimposed it with the geometry that I could see was there, but he couldn't see it. And when he did, like there's a point in there, which was the energy point inside this form, and he doesn't know, he, did, he knows it's the energy point and that's important, but he doesn't know why. But what you see there is, is a pyramid in this complex. Uh, it's actually an octahedron. It goes to a point to the bottom and a point up the top. And, and that point focuses right on there. But it's a chain. It's a, a Z-axis chain that goes down and up. This thing goes up forever. And when we look at it in terms of the DNA, we now know that this is the access point to the human DNA. It's the point where the human being, when they focus on it, can change their own DNA. This is clear to, to what we see. And so there is a lot of really high level information that's about to come out that if, if all, the, all the people that understand this kind of stuff take it on, we may evolve very, very quickly. Right. So I'm... 
<laughs> You're livid. <laughs> With uh, there's so much. I haven't started on the, this whole thing, but this is, this is I, I didn't know this was here. And now that I know it's here, I, I realize that there are probably more of these things going out there. There's so there's has to be so much. I mean, especially like with with these a bunch of Fibonacci's um, that like we we can't really come well, we haven't comprehended so far, but it makes sense that like it matches with other forms of life. That maybe that's part of the reason we we haven't met or really communicated with other forms of life on a large scale yet is because we don't can yeah. exist. It is hard for them to communicate with us because we are so different. We're we're primal. Mm -hmm. We're one of the first levels of of you know of life figuring out how to make bodies and things like this. Right. We've gone way beyond that. And it's way beyond it. Yeah. But still, we are if, by our being able to understand what I'm talking about and understanding that there are other ways that bodies can be made. Still in the Fibonacci. Uh, understanding which still approximates the golden mean it just approximates it better <laughs> and closer than anything we can do okay cool and so, that, so that's kind of where it is i want to well i want to i want to ask you another question uh sort of about this but a little bit more personal too to all of the people watching and and um just as sort of as it relates to everybody um you know we uh well, you've mentioned before, like, and this is this is all interconnected, right? With like with like rapid ascension and rapid evolution, and and even technologically assisted evolution because of where we came from and the fall of consciousness, and everything. Um, and you said before that um, if if we weren't like out of here, you know, by like it was like the end of 2015 or or maybe it was middle of 2016 or so, then the mind. You said that the minds were wrong, and um, I remember ask, actually asking you about this recently. Um, but I was hoping maybe you could kind of elaborate on it. Talk about it. How, like, and then also, how do we prepare for for this change that, like, we're kind of being held in the state? You know what I mean? Well, you have two paths now. You and uh, you can go through the normal way of the ATIH, and if you do that, your body's just going to disappear here and reappear in the fourth dimension, and you'll begin a process where you uh, slowly move up through the levels. That's okay. Uh, and there are really quite a few people that know how to do this now. Uh, uh, so we'll see who does what. And you know, it doesn't make any difference. It <coughs> excuse me. It doesn't make any difference if we uh, if we die. If we die, then we're still going to go through. Uh, it's all been set up. We'll still go through a particular way. We'll end up in the fourth dimension. And, uh, and the Great White Brotherhood have, has, has prepared for this for a long time, that they can take each one of these people in 15 minutes, get them to know what we're talking about, and, 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 give, and, and put them on the path that they need to, to go. It'll take longer that way, but it's perfectly fine. If you feel comfortable with it, do it. You don't have to go into this other thing. But some people, and even if it's only a handful, some people are going to see this and get excited and realize, okay, I want to, I want to go this way. And, and if they do, uh, there are, uh, there, I forgot your original question. I know I'm sort of threw a bunch at you because it's such a big image in my mind. The first question really is, is were the Mayans wrong or, or what happened in they this? They were wrong because they, because what they said, they've been here for, over 26,000 years. That's what they tell me. Anyway. And, they, and, and they tell me things that make me believe them. Uh, and they said, that it, and then in all the times that they've been here, uh, they've watched all the changes happen. And they've, and they've seen people you know, go through ascension and they've gone through ascension and everything else. But uh, they didn't know uh, about what we're talking about now. And, and life has chosen to do this rather than the other one. The other one's still there, but life has chosen to take a different pathway. And it's a pathway that humankind has never taken before. Not ever. Not, we're only 230,000 years old as a DNA. Can you describe what that pathway looks like? It, 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 it's going to look, well, it's a, it's, it's a form of Tantra. 
and it is done it can be done by either one person two people or three and the reason we say that is because in the heavens you see uh, Birkeland currents that are either one strand two strands wrapped around each other or one strand with two strands wrapped around each other wow. and so there's three examples out there that that uh, Tantra can be either by yourself with two people or with three people uh, there has to be a, a it has to be both male and female in the second one and in the third one it could be male and female and the third person can be either male or female it doesn't matter this is exactly the same thing that when two human beings make a baby. It doesn't take two people, it takes three. And, and one has to be male, one has to be female, and the third one can be either male or female. And, and that third one is neutral. It is, not, it is not involved in the Tantra. It provi provides a structure that they wrap around. Right, and, okay, yeah. And, that it's, it's like the child coming in. The child has no sexual energy. It is a baby, and it doesn't have any charge. It's neutral. And so the third person could, has to be an absolutely neutral person. And very often, it's a very old person that is now uh, no longer involved in sexual energy. And is, uh, like a grandfather or a grandmother kind of energy. Yes, and, and so that's what happened. And so the minds, uh, when they realize, they didn't know what I was doing, I don't think. Maybe they did, they know a lot, and it always blows my mind. But uh, they, right after I learned how to do this, I, I figured it out. It took me a long time to understand how the heart was doing this and what it was doing. It was Marco Rodin's work that enabled me to see how the heart was actually doubling that each time. So when it, go, it starts out with a certain amount of electricity, and when it goes around one time, it's 64 times stronger. And that's what it gives. That's when you hear a thump, thump, a magnetic field goes out, and streaming goes out the top of the body, and it's it's constantly doing that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! No, that, that that's it. okay. Okay, so no, it's really good. Uh, we'll continue that. That the the next part of the question was then, how do how does one prepare? Because there's obviously there's like, you know, um, I, I'm I, I don't know if if the way. I'm being taught how to do this is the only way, or if there are slightly different ways. Yeah, and I won't know that until hundreds of people start doing it and we say, and somebody comes up and says, well, I tried your way, but I need to do it slightly different or whatever, and that's, that's life, that's okay. We, we, as long as they can have the experience, it doesn't matter. And um, so, again, I forgot, the, que the original question, I'm mean, getting off and all these other things. You wanted to know what about this? First was, was the mind, were the minds wrong? Okay, um, let me just stay with that for a moment. Okay, okay. And try to keep me on that. Sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> See all these other ways to go. Uh, the Mayans, from their point of view, they were wrong. Because they have, because they have a time, they say on, on uh, December 21st, 2012, that was when the cycle came back to its full completion. We, and, the, and the Earth and the Sun and the center of the galaxy were in a straight line. And so they know that part of it, they, and they can figure that out, they know that. But uh, all they have ever seen is that it's be, there's a window of time around that, that moment, and it's usually about four years before and four years afterwards, approximately. Uh, this one began on October 24th, 2007 uh, that's when that blue sphere appeared in the sky bigger than the sun if anybody remember, remembers that if they don't it's it's fact you can go into astronomy and and and, and see it and uh and that was the blue star that they talked about and and that opens the window but the window is not closed according to their prophecy until the red star appears and the red star i believe is going to be betelgeuse around the, the three stars around, there's four stars around the belt of Orion, and the t one on the top left-hand corner is, be, is, a, is a red, is a supernova just beginning. And, and science has said that if that goes supernova in our lifetime, I mean, it hits us here, it's very, very close. If it does, it's gonna shake the Earth. It's gonna be such a powerful thing. We're gonna feel it. 
and that is uh, and and I believe that's the one. And if yes. it is, uh, that would be the end of that cycle. Well, the cycle hasn't ended. It's gone longer than they've seen. Right. And, and what Mother Earth says is that she knew that it wouldn't do this, and that so she has altered uh, things. In essence, it's taken me a while to figure out what she's been doing, but she the the fourth dimension is like a dream space. It's 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 a, on a, a higher frequency. It has m way more energy there, and th that that space. Uh, Is it, it is a diff? It's a things can happen there that could never happen here because you can just imagine something and it appears, and that that's possible here, but very difficult. There, it, anybody can do it, and uh, and so, it, uh, when we go into that space, uh, everything is changed. I can't hold it. I can't hold this. I got too much. Uh, I, I, it's just who I am. I can't. That's why I have to sit in meditation and and and, and sort out all this stuff before I usually uh, write it down or anything because it's there, there's a lot. Anyway, uh, they 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 are wrong uh, because the cycle is continuing. Okay. And they know they're wrong at this point. They knew that this. They can see the cycle still continuing because the red star didn't appear. Right. And, and uh, so Mother Earth. Uh, knowing this also changed everything and she took this she we moved into the fourth dimension a long time ago we just don't know it and I don't know the exact moment it happened but I think it actually was in 1999 really? and uh, and she converted what was going on into fourth dimensional level she took the fourth dimension and at which you can create anything from she recreated the earth as it was and as it was unfolding. So, and that for a very good reason, because we were not able to make this shift. And so she had to buy time. And so by doing that, uh, we are continuing on our evolution. We think we're still here on the earth in this one, but we're not, we're in another world. And uh, we're on another level of the earth's fourth, we're on the earth still on the earth's fourth dimensional level. This is what all the, the, the children are aware of this because that's how they are able to do things like walk through walls and do all these amazing things that they can do uh, because they know they're in the fourth dimension and, and they know that they can just manifest whatever they want. And so, uh, and the sooner the millennials figure out that's what's going on, uh, that's when th they take over. They literally take over the earth because they, governments and religions are just, they won't have anything to do with it anymore. Right. And, and, uh, and obviously those two things aren't helping much right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, so, so then that, that kind of links up too with the idea like there's, there's still unfulfilled prophecies, um, biblical and otherwise, like for, yes all yes. religions that haven't been fulfilled yet so like we're really we're really in like a, a stretched out space the huh? time has been stretched out yeah it's stretched out longer time can stretch it can get shorter it can get fatter to be to end so can gravity right because it's relative right? now that what's going on inside the center of the earth is something we no scientists have ever seen before and it's causing gravitational changes on the earth itself right now if you weigh yourself here and then go to london you're going to be a different amount Really, have to try. And uh, it, it's it, the, literally the place you're on, and there are some places where you'll be really heavy, Ooh. and you'll be other places where you'll be really light, because what's going on inside the earth. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I want to get into that or not, but the iron core of the earth is a solid iron, and it's rotating, and around that is a liquid iron core with other things in it, mm -hmm. and it is, and, and they believe that that is what creates the magnetic field. Though now science has a better, better view of this, and it's not that probably it's more a pure electrical currents that are moving. But uh, and so the 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 core as it moves through that what's happening now is that that very thick gel is turning to thin viscosity like water, right? And it's got lumps in it, 
it's not all. So it slips at one point and then it and then it pulls at others. And so the magnetic field of the earth is dying. It's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And we're at the stage now where the magnetic pole, the scientists of the world believe that the magnetic pole is going to reverse itself. The North Pole is going to become the South. The South is going to become the North. They thought in 2003 that that was going to happen maybe by the end of the century. Now they brought it up to, they, they made another adjustment up to within 25 years. And then recently they made another adjustment saying, this could happen anytime. And, uh, and that magnetic field, by the way, is uh, we, our, us, our DNA has never experienced this. The last time the poles, magnetic poles reverse, they've, they've changed positions. But to actually reverse and change positions, that, the last time that happened was about 790,000 years ago. So our DNA, us, we've been here for 230,000 years. We've never experienced this. We don't know what it means. I don't care. Anybody that says they know what it means, they're, they're guessing because we haven't experienced it. And, uh, and, but this will affect polarities dramatically. And it's going to affect sexuality dramatically if anybody hasn't noticed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's changing males into female and females into males. And, uh, and it's, uh, and uh, I, I don't know where that leads exactly, but we can see it happening all over the world. It, is, it isn't one country or one race or anything else. Uh, this is changing everyone. And when it actually happens, when the poles really do this, then uh, there's going to be, I think, some really amazing changes that we're going to visually see. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this could happen five minutes from now. So just really quick, um, can you describe the difference between the, the, the pole shift from 13,000 years ago and then the 70,000 year cycle that you just described? Because I no, thought... 970,000. Nine hundred, right? Yeah. So like, I thought the last one was a magnetic and physical pole shift. The as last well. two were simply uh, pole shifts that moved a little bit. They moved to another. Even like in Atlantis, like when we like yeah, the fall when Atlantis of moved, it it moved from where Atlantis was up to where it is now. And uh, oh, that's right. It was ninety degrees. So you're saying this is a well, one eighty degrees for a while, but that was only for a while, and then it shifted. It moved into. Uh, uh, well, the location is now, which is also beginning to change. Right. And so what happens after this, and this is what nobody wants me to talk about, but but it's I've written about it in the books even already, is that what triggers uh, physical pole shifts, the, act, the, the Earth is spinning on an axis, and, and, and that is a very, very, very powerful thing. I, I mean, a mathematician said, well, to move an axis, say, like that much, would take so much energy. I mean, because it, it just, it's, uh, it would take so much energy, it would require the moon hitting the Earth to move it. And so they can't, so mathematically, they say this is impossible, it can't happen. But it's happened hundreds and hundreds of times over the last 450 million years. They know that. And so... They know what reality is, but they can't mathematically come to it. Uh, what it is the magnetic pole always that, that goes away and gets very, very weak or it switches poles, but it, it doesn't have to go to zero. It just has to get so weak that it isn't, it isn't doing something. And what that something is, is the magnetic field itself has to pass through your uh, a biomagnetic field to keep you alive. If you don't, if, if the magnetic field goes away, then what happens is your linkage with it is you've lost linkage. You become psychotic, you, your, your connection to the outer world, you don't know what it is. You have no idea, it, it, you, you, you're lost. And, uh, and also uh, the magnetic field is what keeps your memories intact. And so you not only become psychotic, but you lose your memories. And this is, we gave the example of the Mir space station when the Russians first put somebody on there. Uh, when the, after two weeks, 
there was one person on there and after two weeks they were getting steady feedback and then suddenly zero they brought somebody else up there replaced him brought him back down and and found out that he was not connected to reality and had no memory they tried to heal him for two years and after two years they went to the united nations and said this is permanent and the other person went up there same thing happened and then there was a period of time where they had to figure it out and they figured it out by making a little electronic device that would approximate the earth's magnetic field around the body or the ship and then everything's fine so and you can do this every millennial and every person that's studying this needs to know that when you are in your Merkaba, your living Merkaba field, you can tell your Merkaba to, to recreate the Earth's magnetic field around you, and it will do it, and you will have no effect from this. You will be normal while everybody else is just insane. Yeah, they basically become zombies. <laughs> no, that's very interesting. So that's really, that's really, I guess, the answer to the, the question of what's the best way to prepare is, like, it doesn't matter what you do physically, but you need to prepare spiritually, prepare your heart, prepare your, your electromagnetic field, right? Like do your Yeah, mercabe. your macabre is important. Uh, the, the knowledge, the memory of it is important because we lost that memory for a long time. And that's what caused all these problems all this time because we've had no memory of this. Uh, yeah. we, would be, we would be amazing by now if we hadn't have lost that dur during Atlantis. If, if that hadn't happened, we would, Oh my God, we, we would, you wouldn't even recognize us because we would have gone a long ways beyond this. But we're still, and we think that because we're scientifically advanced beyond where we were before, we think that that's important. And that's how, that's how you can tell how, how much value a person is, is what they know and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a side effect that when we go into this in this way, then humankind always tries to figure it out through the electromagnetic fields. If you go back into the Hindu Vedas, going back about five, 6,000 years ago, they talk about this very situation in detail. And they talk about how, and they talk about us, what's gonna to happen to us, how we're gonna to come to this point where we're going to get involved with the electromagnetic fields and science, and we're gonna create these energy fields and, and this new science and think that it's the greatest thing that, we, that, that ever happened. But they also say that we're going to, that at the same time, our spiritual side is growing. And when it gets to a certain point, uh, we're going to, uh, in a single day, according to them, we're going to throw away all of our science and leave it alone, all our cars and our computers and everything else. We won't need them because we will understand who we really are, that we are, we are part of God and we are connected to the whole universe. And, that, and at that point, we can do anything. Anything, anything you make in a box or, or some kind of electronics or anything, uh, okay, you can do that to see if it's possible, but uh, every person on earth will be able to do anything. They can get anything they want. They can have anything they can want, and they'll never die ever again, and they'll become very, very healthy, both, both emotionally, mentally, physically, and everything. Uh, they will awaken to a clear field, and, and that, if the Vedas are correct, and it's one of the oldest writings we have on earth. Uh, they know what they're talking about. And I can see what they're talking about now. And I can even see how this could happen very soon. So I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to give up. Don't worry, I'm not going to give up. And, and uh, my, my job now is to make sure that you guys get this information because I'm only one person interpreting this. And uh, we need more people understanding this and figuring and so that it can be understood better and, and we can really unfold. Yeah, that's that's uh, what I always say too, is like really have your own experience when you're watching or reading or learning about this stuff because it's it's, it's the experience that like, I think that you know, in modern yeah. times we, we've written off the experience to be non valuable but that's like, oh, that's like your whole experience, you know? <laughs> When I gave this workshop, I, I, and both times I saw, saw something I had never really seen before, when they got the whole thing, I mean, people just broke down crying. They just couldn't stop. They were just crying because they realized what this meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, this, is, this is fantastic. 
when uh, they were teaching me how to use, once I understood how it all worked in my mind, I had to bring it into my heart and bring it into my body. And so I started doing what they were telling me. I had uh, Thoth and, and Shisat came back in and they were with me every day teaching me how this can be used. And so once I got to the point where I did it, where I could do it, where I could expand out big enough, because when, when you get to a certain point and you and at the moment of orgasm, this stream goes out through the top and, and it's all geometrical what happens. It's, it's all part of you. It's, it's who you are. And this streaming goes through this out at the Omega Sphere, way out here, about 30 feet out, which has a water cap at the top. And science knows that the electricity has to move through water. It's exactly what it does. It moves through the icosahedron and through the dodecahedron and then goes out this massive stream of electricity out through the top and down through the bottom. And that is the, that is how you connect. Though it eventually goes out and becomes this huge uh, toroidal field. And once it, and I mean really big, bigger, the first time you do it, it, it you may capture the solar system. And then very quickly, uh, I, I, I got to a point where I captured what is called the local universe. It's everything that you can see with the naked eye. And, uh, and, and right when I did that, the Mayans called me up and said, we have to talk to you. You have done something and we have to talk to you. So they sent three Mayans up to here, to Sedona, where I am. And they, and they said, we need three days for ceremony. So for three days, we did ceremony. And at the very end, they brought in these small uh, 13 crystal skulls. And, uh, and we did ceremony with that, 12, excuse me, 12 crystal skulls. And we did ceremony with that. And at the very end, they brought out a full-size uh, uh, crystal skull that was made of jade, I think, which they said was the oldest one from Atlantis. And, and it was a Mayan person who was in there. And, uh, and that Mayan person learned what I had learned th through this and streamed out and became that he became the local universe. And uh, I wish I could show you things that we have here now where you can actually see the pathway that he came in to get to us. And science watched this happen. It's been documented. They've seen he came down, he went through one local universe into another one, he was searching for it. And then he came over to this one over here where, where I was in, and then he went all around and then came straight to earth. <laughs> And, uh, and so they, did, they did, gave it to me, and, when I, and I didn't know who it was. I went in there. It was male, a male, uh, an older male Mayan, and he was the one that came back in when I was learning to do this, how to do this, how, how to, what this means. And, and, uh, and so I've had a lot of help. I could have never done this by myself. There's no way. And, uh, and so uh, life is really trying to help us right now. In a, in a lot of ways. And so uh, I, I don't see anything that's going to stop us. We have a lot of assistance right now. And, and, and the people that are trying to do this in various ways, they, whether they know it or not, you've got massive amounts of life that is doing everything they can to uh, help us, and even by stretching time out so we have more time to be able to understand it. So, because we weren't going to make it. This is what the ETs kept telling me. And I kept telling them, no, no, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Well, we didn't make it. We are going to make it, but they had to alter time and space and everything to be able to do that. But life did that for us. They've changed it. It wasn't just Mother Earth. It was through the Berkeley currents going out from there to the sun to all life everywhere. Everything, every living thing, including little tiny bugs and bacteria and everything else, they're just as important as we are. And, and all these various levels that see life in a different way are all coming together because they know that, that we have to do this. We have to, it doesn't have to be every last person on earth and it almost certainly won't be, but it might be, uh, but it's probably gonna be a much smaller group of a few million people. I don't know, maybe less. And, uh, but those people are so crucial for all the rest of life 
because we're making a jump into a higher level of existence that they have never, all, even all the rest of life, the highest beings in this whole solar system, I mean, this whole universe, all of it have never experienced what we're about to experience. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and for whatever the reason, you can go why or why, why us, I don't know, why this little grain of sand in the middle of nowhere, but the, this has been chosen as the place for what as to, as to be that, that, that little spark of light that goes out and all the rest of life comes behind us. We are the ones that leave them. And so we can't fail. <laughs> we just can't. And because I'm coming from where we're going to, I know that we don't fail. I, I'm certain of this because I, I could go into the future and I know that we make it. And, and, I, and on a deeper level and a history level, I need to go into why this is happening. But uh, uh, right now, we're just day to day uh, having our tea and coffee and things and whatever it is and living our lives. But, uh, uh, but every person on earth, even those that die and all the rest of earth life that's on this is crucial to what's about to happen. And I don't know when this is going to happen. I, I really, I don't know. Uh, there's no timeline anymore. I don't have the Mayans saying, yeah, you're between here and here or anything else like that. If we see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice getting bigger. Turning red. Turning red. It already is turning red. Exploding, I guess, right? It's exploding right now, but it hasn't reached us. Okay. Uh, if we see that happening, then yeah, maybe it'll only get this big in the sky. It doesn't actually have to reach the Earth. It, uh, That's still pretty big for a star, which is normally like that. Oh yeah, but this thing's close. It's not very far away, and, and uh, uh, we're, they said it'll actually shake the Earth. So this I is. I reckon that would probably be like that. That could be the catalyst for all of these events, like the flipping of the magnetics and polar. I, 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 we are supposed to do this before the end of the cycle. So in other words, when that starts happening, we may see it, but we got to go. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the, after that, you, you can't do it. Seems we got work to do. We got to make, you got to write a book. I got to make some videos. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have, I have one final question for you, because this is our hour, so like, I, uh, I don't want to take up your whole day, and I thank you so uh, much. I don't, I don't care, whatever. It's so much fun. Yeah, I know. We can really talk all day. Um, so I'm, as you know, I told you about, um, I'm making this basic, I'm doing the first half of the Nibiru movie. Um, like, cause I did the Atlanta story before, but I, there was the whole like Nibiru and the Anunnaki and then the Adam and Eve and the seeding of the human race and everything that, that came along, which we're putting into a video right now. If you, if you knew or had any documentation on when in time, like how, how many million or billion years ago Nibiru first came into our solar system and crashed into Tiamat? If you oh, that was a that was a really really long time ago. You need to study the Sumerian records. Yeah, well, they, I was they, reading they, Sitchin and then, like I was reading like four you know like four point one billion years ago, like when our like that's when science also pegs the creation of the moon. Um, so that kind of lined up for me. But there's other people who say, oh, it was like you know fifty million years ago, and that didn't really. Work in my head, but I was 15 million years ago. Sorry, 15 million years ago. So, I mean, there's a lot of people on the internet who are like, you know, posting well, different things. So, I mean, you have to interpret uh, uh, Shishkin's work, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's not the only one. You know, there's over a hundred people that can read cuneiform, mm -hmm. and so uh, he's not the only person. Uh, you can find other people that read. And bring, give you another view besides Sitchkin. Uh, but I, I believe that, that it was uh, in the billions, 4.1 or whatever it was, billion years ago. This was a long time ago. Okay. Uh, and and uh, uh, Nibiru uh, comes back in, I think it's every 3,600 years. It's like 500 years from now, too, right? It's like it's, it's, years. it's a while. There are all these people out there saying oh, that, uh, that it's coming, it's behind the sun, it's coming in and everything. But uh, uh, it's never happened. This is like the 
fourteenth time or something they said this. Yeah, uh, I got a hold of the of the NASA's records when they found uh, Planet X, which they which they called, and that planet is huge. It's hu it's it's the size of Jupiter. Mm, you're right. Okay. And it's a big, big, big planet. They found four more of them now. Four more huge planets out there, and now they found a whole world of planets and things out there that they never knew was there. The solar system that we know, and you know, to Pluto, sort of, they think that's the edge of it. Is uh, if you had something, can I say, yeah, something this big, this would be the whole solar system, and we're down here in a little speck in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot bigger than we ever thought, with a lot more stuff in it, and. Uh, so I, I don't know, but but Nibiru, when they found it, they called it Planet X, and I got the paperwork, I got it all, and I read it, and uh, th and they said that it was out a certain distance and uh, and the size and mass, they knew it, they had calculated its orbit at that time, and it was about five hundred and something years before it would actually arrive back here, mm -hmm. and so uh, that uh, at that point now they're saying that Planet X is not Nibiru, and they're trying to debunk everything. But in that first week afterwards, they were telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, they also found a planet out there that's bigger than Jupiter that doesn't weigh anything. It's like it's hollow, like it's an eggshell or something. Uh, that's, really that's interesting. interesting. I've also, I've seen a lot of videos and people have been showing me videos and stuff in the last little while of, um, you know, people are it's similar to what you're saying about how there's like, you know, something kind of behind the sun that's coming close or whatever, but it's sort of like, it almost looks like a second sun. And there's a lot of videos of this now where like you have the sun and then you have this giant glowing yellow looks exactly yeah. like the sun yeah. over. The, the, the uh, Native Americans talk about this, that there is a sun that's always behind, it moves exactly opposite to the earth. And so it's always opposite. You can't see it from the earth. But we've been in space from other levels. Yeah. And we can look back and there's no sun there. Right. And so I, I, I can't explain this. I don't know. We don't know what that is. Okay. I, I don't know what it is. Interesting. But it's not me, Yeah, no, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't think it was. I know it's the biggest Jupiter. It's still a little tiny thing compared to a sun. And, and, and you wouldn't be able to see it while the sun is up. And that's the weird thing is like when the sun starts getting down, and like I have a friend who caught the sun video and I have, and I, there's some videos that another friend has sent me of like a compilation of just being like when the sun's, you know, starting to go into sunset left for like a, a good, you know, yeah, I, I know. It, it may be some kind of optical thing of the, of the sun of what, how it reflects itself. It could be that too. Yeah. No. It could be entirely I don't I, I don't know what the answer to that one is okay uh, but it's, uh, yeah. but it's not Nibiru I, I, yeah. I don't think I think that's gonna be a long time before it gets here and, and we might be happy that's true because when it comes through it would just cause, cause havoc in, in the solar system so yeah. in that case actually if, if Nibiru has a 3600 year or Orbit, which I'm I'm curious about because I, I I feel like maybe that was just one interpretation of Sitchin because the, could be, the guys we don't know stuff. how much how accurate he is on these things right right <laughs> because like 600 years ago in history there wasn't really a lot of like writings that were going around you know I mean we had like cuneiform and then we maybe had some some paper writing but not a lot exists from 3,000 years ago still paper um but like like would we be able to see like disastrous things that would have happened 3600 years ago in our history 2000 bc that's a very good thing to look for yeah yeah uh, the uh the electric universe and, and, if, and nobody's if nobody's looked at what the electric universe is doing they're about to change science over the whole world and mm -hmm. uh, and they uh they also look at it uh uh not just scientific ways, but uh, what people have been saying around the world, the, the, the myths, the, the, the ideas that people have made up, usually have a grain of truth to these things of why they happened. And, uh, and there are people out there that have, have taken that to a great deal and, and finding correlation like you're trying to find.
in, in what they, people had said a long time ago. Right. Because now, like, and I, I told you a little bit about this before, and I don't know if you've, you've looked it up, but um, a man named Mike Brown and a Constantine, um, I don't know his last name, but he was saying that, uh, or they, they, they've been really looking for Nibiru and, and like, um, or Planet X, like they're not calling it Nibiru, right? But they basically- And, not, and the government is saying that's, that Nibiru is not Planet X. But of course, of Nibiru, course. But anyway. What they, what they have found though, is like a Neptune or, or yeah, like a Neptune sized planet that has a long elliptical orbit that goes through our solar system. Um, but it, it, they don't say that it comes as close to the, you know, as to, to the, to the asteroid belt as like the Nibiru is supposed to, but they did say that it had three, it was like, they, they estimated a 36,000 year cycle rather than 3,600. So it kind of made me think maybe like that was a mistranslation with Sitchin of the Sumerian tablets. Maybe it was 36,000 year cycle? Yeah, 36, yeah, 36 instead of 3,600. Well, uh, those are the kinds of mistakes that are easily, 10 times anything is something that can be easily made. Mm -hmm. Drop off a zero or somewhere and you got it. Right. I mean, and we're interpreting texts that are 6,000 years old, so. Yes, I know, but Nibiru is not, is not playing a, a, a a, a physical role in what's happening right now. I don't think that's good to know. You know, so I don't think I, I don't think it's worth time uh, hanging out there too much because it's uh, though it is important because that's where uh, the Nephilim came from, mm -hmm. and they came down here and and influenced our evolution dramatically. I think I, I think it's for that reason that it, I feel so compelled to um, to be working on it is is really to just to just complete the story you know because that's like that, that's one of the most popular videos out there is the human history movie about Atlantis and the, the rising and back to hum back to consciousness but it was never completed it was always this like where but where did we come from before that that I really want to like put out there but that in addition to We've like been around forever <laughs> sorry. Different. We've been around forever in different forms and different ways. No, nope. the idea that a human being is just got one life and it's over with at the end is just ridiculous. I mean, it, it, it's just ridiculous. How, how could we get this evolved in one day? I mean, it's, it just doesn't happen. It is. Uh, we've been around. I, from my understanding of every every teacher I've ever known, without exception, they all believe that humankind. A human being has been around forever from the beginning, and uh, and uh, and even before we, if if we did come from a big bang and we came out of a little speck so small you can't see, and we're now this big, we were still there then. Uh, we we, uh, we may take a body and then die, but we're still alive, and we're going to go to another place and take another body, or or go into formlessness and and whatever, but we're not going to not exist anymore. That's just not true. And it doesn't even make any sense. So I guess the, the moral of that is that no matter what happens, you know, as long as you just don't fear, because no matter what happens, no matter how crazy things get, we're always going to be out there. It's, there's no real reason for fear for, from what's about to happen because, uh, no matter how it is, we're, we're, the universe is behind us and controlling what's taking place. Mm -hmm. It isn't us, you know, it's not me or you or anything else. This is much bigger. This is as big as it gets, actually. Mm -hmm. and, but there are areas of this universe that they don't know about at, that are so much bigger than this universe, it's crazy. And uh, everything they're not aware of it. Everything that we see is just such a tiny little frac fraction of what actually is out there, right? Oh yeah, I know, but they, they don't they don't know what's really going on. The, the, you know, you got a lot of uh, life forms like like the the greys, for example, which we're familiar with. You know, they've been trying to go through these portals to get to these other sites where they are. There's 13 of these in in existence, and they've been trying for two million years, maybe a little more with super science, with a spaceship that can go into all 144 dimensional levels, but they can't get over this great wall into the next level, to the next level of octaves, uh, and they can't get in there. They've tried to get in there, but they can't. And uh, nobody has that I know of. Now, maybe somebody did, 
<laughs> and, and we just don't know it. But uh, I don't think so. And and because because I, I I came from that place, the next level up there, and I know why we're here, why this transition is taking place. The the, the, the there's only one form in in this next uh, octave, which is the I'm in the uh, base chakra of that of that thirteen chakra system, and uh, and in the base chakra, way down deep in the core of it. There are the, the first uh, the first 144 dimensional levels, and 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 they're and they're what they're doing is they're recording these things in a different way. It's like a library. The the one that we're in now, this third dimensional world, this is old. This is ancient. We have gone so far beyond this at this point. It, this is like ancient, ancient, ancient history. <laughs> And and but they they're, they're our jobs now being in the base chakra is to record where we came from, and that's what this is. The first the first two levels are recorded. The third level is about to be recorded, and then we're going to record all 144 dimensional levels. This this third level, <clears throat> the third dimension, it's like a fossil. If you went down in the earth a long ways and you found this little fossil in there. We're like an old fossil. Came everything that how we got here, and and you absolutely have to know your past to know where you're going in the future. That's never going to change as long as we're in this this way of seeing. Even if even if time is spherical and all things are happening at once, we have to know all things that are happening at once in order to do this. Uh, and so. That's all it is, is we are now, uh, when I've said that it, there will come a time when this universe will not exist, that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to take it and put it into this place, into, into the next level of existence, so that it has it recorded. If we ever want to go back there, we can. But this one and all the other ones associated with it, that, that, that as, as living things, are going to go into a... A state that is not the same way it's it's it's, it's something that we're, we as we've evolved to this next level we we feel on that level that we must have this there and so we're doing it. and uh, and it's also going to be an amazing experience because every person every little bug every single thing in existence as they move through this are going to understand their entire past from from before we came into this level of existence before the big thing they're going to understand their own past and how they move through everything that, that's also really important to remember because we can't really expand into this this next level of existence until we remember who the heck we are and what we've done and how incredible I mean, I'm not saying that from an ego point of view, but how really amazing every single thing is. Every little ant that walks on the ground, you know, okay, they're little and we think they're insignificant, but size does not matter in this equation. And, and they're just as important as we are. This is why the, the Buddhists don't want to kill anything. Mm -hmm. They're trying to avoid killing anything because they understand how important every single life form is, including every single human being. And uh, we have arrived at this level. So it is important. And, I, I'm, and it, it's happening, but it's not happening in the way the Mayans thought it was going to happen. They, they didn't know that you can change these windows if, if it's necessary. Right, the rules have changed. They have, and as you can see, uh, what's happening in the male aspect in Trump that just became president is perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, he he's he, he will just bring it all down anyway. And but it but the the governments and everything are going to fold. It really seems like that he's he's kind of representing part of the destabilization that's required in order to make something new. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to crash. 
and we are going to come up with other things. They're temporary. Uh, we're going to create temporary things that get stabilized, and that'll break down, and we keep going until we realize that we are not a body. We are a spirit, and we are eternal and have been eternal forever. And, and in the realization of that, that's when what this is all about, that's when it begins to happen, really begins to happen. And, and nobody should give up. I mean, if you've got a body, I don't care if you have any arms or legs and you're just sitting in a wheelchair or just like that. If you've got a heart and your brain is still working, then you can do this. Otherwise, the only, only possibility is death after that, which you still will be fine. I mean, life has figured out how to handle everything, and there is no reason to worry. Just do the best you can, and you're going to be surprised at how good you could do. <laughs> Bless you, John. Bless yeah. you. This I, is, love, I oh, love you. I love you, all you guys out there, and I hope you hear that this is a good thing that's happening here right there. And thank you so, so, so very much for coming and sharing your wisdom oh, with, very happy with the to world today. This is, it's been such an honor. I want to work with you, Jordan. I want to. I hope you, you do. I would like well, to. We're going to end the broadcast, and then you and I can keep talking and figure out if we, what, what our plan is, if that works. So to yeah. everybody watching, thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Yeah, thank you. I love you guys. From the bottom of our hearts. We'll see you next time. Okay.